Today I've discovered one of Central California's best kept secrets, traditional British style cider right in the heart of wine country. Hi, I'm Suzanne Henriksen, a researcher and storyteller by trade and a world explorer drink local enthusiast by heart. I'm traveling the world to celebrate and share the people, the process, the stories, and the innovations behind craft alcohol. And I can't wait to share our amazing finds with all of you. So let's get drinking, crafty cask style. I first discovered my love of cider over 15 years ago in San Sebastian, Spain. Fast forward a few years to when I'm in the States, and I take my first sip of cider here, and it's sweet and soda-like and I'm confused about why it's so different from what I loved and experienced in Spain. Lucky for us, we are in the middle of a craft cider revolution. It's a little bit more dry, a little bit more bitter. Are you one of those cider skeptics that thinks that cider is girly, sweet, and maybe not for you? If so, you're gonna wanna stay put as I introduce you to Bristol Cider House. Bristol Cider House was started by this brother and sister duo, Neil and Jackie, who grew up in the UK. And they really love their cider in the UK, so they drank a lot of it growing up there. And when they came here, they started Bristol Cider House. So tell me a little bit about the owner, Neil. He grew up in the UK. You know, cider's like water there, right? And so when he came out here to California, started making wine after a hard day's work, reached for a glass of cider that he knew and loved, what happened? There wasn't a lot to choose from. Around 1994, there weren't a lot of domestically produced ciders to begin with, and here on the Central Coast, they were almost non-existent. So Neil took it upon himself to start making cider. So he just said, like, what the hell, I'm gonna start making cider? Had he ever made cider before? He hadn't, but luckily, cider making is really similar to winemaking. So okay. you just need the source material. The trick for us comes into the blending portion, where we, we have all these different ciders aged in barrels and tanks and uh, everything's native yeast fermented, so there's a lot of just variety. And then when we sit down and we make our mock blends, each cider is uniquely different every time we make it. Can we take a little bit of a tour and show me just the steps that kind of goes into cider making? Yeah, that sounds fun. Talk me through this process a little bit. Clearly, you start with the apples. We source from as far north as Sonoma down through Sea Canyon here in San Luis Obispo County. We bring them here to the cider house and then we will press them in our hydraulic press. Okay. After the juice is gone um, from the press into either a barrel or a tank, mm -hmm. we'll do a spontaneous yeast fermentation. Okay. It just kind of happens, which yeah. is really good for us, but also really unique as far as flavors. The fermentation usually lasts somewhere between a week to two weeks, and then we let the cider age in the vessel that it's in for probably around three months before we really start to think about blending it. Yeah. And uh, we'll put it in a tank called the Bright Tank, which is okay. right over here. Great. And so the bright tank we use to uh, to keep the pressure and force carbonate the uh, the ciders to get that bubble that everyone's looking for. Okay. Uh, this particular one is filled right now with uh, a cider we call Changala. It's uh, named after the vineyard that we source the apples from, but it's also co-fermented with a citrus fruit called Quince. Oh, interesting. So let's get that try. Oh, we get to try straight from yeah. the tank, huh? Cheers. It's just so different than what people think of as like classic American ciders that are that sweet. It's like a little bit of a funkiness to it, but in the best possible way, right? And then it's a really fresh, but kind of like a little bit tart taste. Really incredible. Thank you. Thank so this is great, but I know you do a lot of different styles of cider. Can we go try a few others? Yeah, that'd be yeah? fun. Let's great. do that. All right, so hit me up with your most classic British cider. Well, that's gonna be the Skimmington. All right. This is the West Country Scrumpy, and a Scrumpy typically is going to be a cider that's very much bready and farmhouse quality. So this and is fun to say. Fun to, scrumpy. totally. <laughs> scrumpy Skimmington. Scrumpy is a, is more of a style that tends to lean towards the the barnyard farmhouse kind of quality. Okay. Um, Saison in beer is would be kind of scrumpy esque, gotcha. but in cider that's its unique word. Okay, scrumpy. I like it. Wow, this is really interesting. Not carbonated. It's not carbonated and it's made that way on purpose. It's uh, it's reminiscent of what you'd find in the West Country. It's great, it's really delicious. And I love that it's a little bit more dry and tart like that. There's a very American style in that we uh, we age some of our ciders and ferment them in bourbon barrels. Oh, interesting. So straight out of Kentucky. Okay. We call this one Blackbeard and it's gonna be bottle conditioned with Britannomyces and Champagne yeast. And it's a, a blend of five different apples. Arkansas wow. Black. Black Twig, Newtown Pippin, mm. Pink Lady, and Granny Smith. It's a little oh. bit higher on the alcohol too because of the bourbon extraction. Yeah, it's it's crisp, like it's a little bit more crisp, and you can it gets a deepness from that kind of bourbon aging. Mm -hmm. It's really quite nice. 
So you said there's different varieties in this one in particular. And I see we have quite a few apples in front of us here. So I've got five that are considered cider apples to us. One of my favorite right here is it's called the Pink Pearl. You'll see why we call it the Pink Pearl after I make this slice. Okay. Oh, look at that. It's gorgeous inside. It's one of the few uh, red fleshed varieties out there. I've never seen something like this. Yeah. You take the bites. Mmm. It's pretty sweet. It is. It's a... Uh, Accumulates a lot, a decent amount of sugar, but it's it's that unique flavor profile of this one specific apple. It's kind of like a Jolly Rancher meets a little bit of birthday cake. Yeah, it's yeah, I can tasty. totally get that. So Eric, thank you so much. This was really incredible. I had a great time trying the apples, seeing the process, trying a couple of your ciders. I'm gonna have to come back and try them all. You're gonna need to come back. I yeah, think. absolutely. Tonight you might see me hanging out yeah, at the bar. That yeah, sounds good. But thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Cheers. Cheers. Next time you're in Central California, maybe need a break from all the wine, come down to Bristol Cider House and get a little taste of the UK. You can enjoy it here in their stylishly British punk tasting room, take some home with you, or order it online. And of course, don't forget to ask your favorite bar or bottle shop to carry Bristol Cider. Because after all, supporting craft producers and introducing you to unique and incredible drinks is what we're all about at the Crafty Cast. Until next time, drink craft and drink local. I'm back. As a quick reminder, the Crafty Cask is a scrappy little startup, but we have big ideas and plans to help all of you discover and drink amazing craft alcohol. So if you like what you see, please hit like and leave us some comments below. The more support we get, the more we'll be able to create even better content for all of you and bring our amazingly fun vision to life. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel here or our mailing list here. Thanks so much and happy craft drinking.